One of the best moves I ever, ever did was utilize my um, experience uh, in as a commercial agent to get myself in the position to be a commercial investor, okay? Every single person on this call, okay, if you are a licensed real estate agent and you're, you're, you're out there in the mix, in, in the middle of the action, okay, on a regular basis, you can do this too, all right? And we're going to get into why, okay? So step one, folks, you have to learn the listing side of the game. In fact, guys, type a one in the chat if you have ever heard the saying, you got a list to last, right? Type a one in the chat, okay? Okay, Scott's with me. Okay, cool. See the only one? See the only one that knows you got a list to last? Everybody should know it. Okay, okay, here we go. You guys are just a little delayed. Wesley's with me. David's with me. iPhone's with me. Okay, folks, now, okay, now that you've all heard that, type with, on a scale of one to 10, how many of you actually believe it, folks? Very, very important. Scale of one to 10, how many of you actually believe that to be true? Scott's with me. Okay, SMS company's with me. Word. Now we're talking. Kimberly's with me. I, okay. Good, good, good. Joanne. Okay. So it's, it seems like the, the, the debate is over with, okay. Um, five out of five people in a row that just responded know that you have to list to last. Okay. Because the next thing I'm going to tell you is if you are working with leasing and buyers, okay. Anything other than working with sellers, folks are working harder than you have to. Okay. You're just on a hamster wheel, basically running as hard as you can, but not going as far as you'd like. Okay. Now you guys will get this analogy. If you had to go from New York to LA, what's the fastest way of getting there? Type it in the chat for me, guys. What's the fastest way of getting there? Let's see what everybody comes up with. I see airplane. I see airplane. I see fly. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. All right. Fly, direct, plane. Okay. Pretty much a consensus, right guys? Okay. But what if I wanted to take my moped? Would that be a good idea? Would that be the most efficient way? Yes or no? Type yes or no in the chat. Would that be the most efficient way? Would that be the fastest way? Would that be the most comfortable way? Would that be the most high probability way? If you answered, Scott says it's better than walking. True, true. Okay. But damn, not much. <laughs> what, do, what do mopeds top out at? Uh, about 29 miles an hour, right? So the point I'm making, folks, okay, any path will get you there. Well, well I should say multiple paths will get you there. The question is, what's going to get you there the fastest? What's going to be the most direct? What's going to be the highest probability? Guys, write that word down. In fact, type it in the chat for me. Capital P, probability. Because folks, oftentimes people say, oh, well, I'm do what I'm doing, it works. What I'm doing, it works. Yes, but does it work the highest percentage of the time possible? Okay, it's like this. What is you know, you got to, if you're going to swing for a home run, you got to swing as hard as you can bam, to knock it out of the park. But to get on first base, you can have a nice controlled swing, just pop and, you, and you, you get a base hit, right? The point I'm making, right? Pete Rose was Hall of Fame material because he got on base more than just about anybody, okay? You don't always have to swing for the fences. But it, when you're when you're learning the listing side of the game, it's higher probability. They might not be the biggest deals you ever pop, but dang, it is really, really nice to get two, sometimes even three closings a month, every month, guys. How many of you like type 2X or type 3X if you guys would like to have two or three listings close a month? You with me, guys? Samantha's 3X. Hey, hey, what's up, Sam? Good to see you. Yeah, Lisa's with me. 3X, 4X. Yes, that's what we're talking about, okay? One of my, in fact... One of my students, I just spoke to him today. His name is Nick Vasiloff. He might be on here. Shout out to Nick. What's up? Um, Nick and I just spoke this morning and he just closed one of his first listings. He just started with me um, last year. He got five listings in his first 90 days and he's closing his second deal within the next 30 days. So he's going to have two listings closed. He just started with me, you know, uh, uh, last year and he's going to have two listings closed this month alone. The point I'm making, folks, is if you're not on the listing side of the game, it's very hard to have that level of, of, uh, of uh, consistency. You with me, guys? Okay. You guys want to be consistent? You guys want high probability? You got to do it on the listing side. Y'all make sense? Okay. Type a one in the chat if you're with me. Sweet. Now, folks, number two, once you get your listing game together, the next thing you have to do is get a team 
to do everything but the big three for you, okay? Here's what I mean. Folks, if you know what your hourly rate is, do me a favor and type it in the chat right now, okay? I want you guys to start looking at this game, and folks, it is a game, okay? This real estate game, start looking at it like it's... uh. Like like it's it's a game to be won, okay? Because it, it at one hundred percent is okay. You know the first level is surviving, the next level is thriving, okay? So if you don't know your hourly rate, take whatever your economic goal is for this year and divide by two thousand man hours, right? Meaning fifty hours a week. I'm sorry, forty hours a week, fifty weeks of the year. Hopefully you take two weeks vacation, and that's going to leave you with two thousand hours worked. I know you're probably saying I work a lot more than forty hours a week, but just humor me with this. All right, guys. <clears throat> so the point I'm making, folks, is you're going to take whatever you want to earn. You're going to divide by two thousand. That's your hourly rate. Okay. You've heard me say this before, but I'm going to say it again because here's the thing, guys. There's nothing new under the sun. You're going to hear me say the same things over and over again because you need to hear them. And what that means is everything you do, okay, you need to do with the intention of doing it for your hourly rate, okay? So uh, Chrissy says, leverage your time, 1,000 hours a year. Heck yeah. Okay, so Scott says, we'll use Scott's example, right? $225 an hour, Okay. If Scott is earning $225 an hour every hour for 2,000 hours a year, doesn't it stand to reason that he's going to make $450,000 this year? Not bad. $450,000 this year would make him in the top 1% of earners. Type 1% in the chat if you guys want to be 1% earners, okay? Now, the point I'm making, okay, is that if you're going to be a 1% earner, this is a perfect example. Thank you for the segue, Scott. That's awesome. Um, you need to do two things. Number one, you need to be doing what 99% of people are not doing. You cannot be in the, doing the same tired old BS that uh, and following the same advice that every other commercial broker does. Does that make sense, guys? Type yes in the chat if you're with me. If you're doing what everyone else is doing, you're going to get what everyone else is getting. You're not going to be a 1%er. You're going to be right in the middle of the pack. You guys with me? Sam's with me. Joanne's with me. iPhone's with me. Yes. Okay. Now, the other thing is, guys, you have to be willing to go further than 99% of people. It's just that simple. Okay. The person that's ready to die on the hill, metaphorically speaking, right, is the one that's going to win the war. Okay. The one that's going to make an extra dial, go on another meeting, take an extra listing, maybe close an extra property. You with me, guys? That's the difference between average and way above average. You with me, folks? Okay. Now, um, now that we have discovered what our, our hourly rate is, okay, Scott, for example, cannot afford to do anything that's going to drag down his hourly rate or else he's not going to earn it, okay? Because if he's, if he's doing $15 or $20 an hour work, doesn't that gonna, isn't that going to drag down that $225, right? In fact, I'll go out on a limb and say he could hire an admin at $22.50 an hour and as long as he's doing the big three, which I'll get to in just a second, he's going to be making 10x whatever he is paying that person. Does that make sense, guys? To, to talk about it conversely, Scott can buy back two hours of his day for about $45 a day. Do you think that's a good investment? You, you, who says that you can't buy time? You absolutely can buy time, folks. Okay. So now type big three in the chat if you guys want to know what the big three are. Let's see what you got here. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me, talk to me. What do you got? Big three. Lisa wants to know. Sam wants to know. Okay, for you smarty pants, who knows what the big three is? It goes like this. P, P, F, okay? Prospecting, presenting, and following up. Those are the three things that you need to be doing more than you're doing absolutely anything else. Why? Because those are the highest revenue generating activities, number one. And number two, those are the things that typically only you can do. Everything else you can delegate. Creating a flyer, putting it on the MLS, putting something on LoopNet, you know, getting stuff up on CoStar, Crexy, blah, 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 answering emails, answering calls with about uh, listings that you have. All that stuff, guys, can be templated and can be done by someone other than you. You need to be prospecting, presenting, and following up. There's very few things that are more, there's nothing that was more important than those three. And there's a few things that are just a notch or two down that only you can do, but for the most part, the highest ROI, exactly, iPhone, are the big three. Does that make sense, guys? Type yes in the chat, okay? Cool. All right, 
So get a team to do the big everything but the big three for you. What does that team look like? Okay, you're going to need to get an admin. Okay, that's the number one thing. The sooner you can hire an admin and folks, I don't want to hear I can't afford it. If you're telling me you can't afford it, I'm going to throw that back in your lap and say you can't afford not to. Why? Because if you are struggling, okay, it's because you don't have enough hours a day. You can buy back that time. If it means you don't drink Starbucks, so be it. If it means you don't buy a bottle of wine at the end of the week, so be it. If it means that you don't have that beer after work or whatever, I am sure there's something in your life that you're doing that probably costs you 20 bucks a day that you could probably do without so that you could buy back two hours of your day. Make sense, folks? Okay, because think about it. What would you do with what, what two hours a day, five days a week, that's 10 hours a week. What would you do with 500 hours back in your schedule? Think about that, guys. 50 weeks of the year, 10 hours a week, okay? 500 hours. Do you realize that's about 12 weeks worth of work? Do you realize that, folks? You'll get another three months of productivity this month. Does that make sense, guys? You see how I did that math? Very, very simple. 500, exactly. So think of how much your business would take off if not only are you doing less of the, the, the things that you shouldn't be doing, but you're doing more of the things you should be doing. You see how your business takes off, right? You hit this, what's called an inflection point. My business went from 140 a year to 500 a year, okay? In the 24 month period that I, number one, started on the listing side of things, and number two, got an assistant. You with me guys? Okay, very, very simple. And it's no, no mistake why, because I started doing more of the important things and less of the unimportant things. Very simple. All right, guys, the next step in that team, okay, so when you're going to go from lone wolf to pack leader, which is when you have a team, okay, you're going to go and you're going to hire not only an admin, but you're going to bring on a transaction coordinator, okay? Folks, when you are driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour and that call comes in, hi, I need you, I need an extension on this thing because the blah, 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 blah didn't come through, whatever, okay? It is so nice to be able to hit a button on your auto dial Hey, Charlie. Yeah, it's Christian. Yeah, you know that 123 Main Street deal? Yeah, do me a favor. Um, Can you draft an extension and send it over to the, the buyer's agent? Okay, cool. Thank you, buddy. And you still keep going 70 miles an hour, okay? How many of you have ever been driving 70 miles or 80 miles an hour down the road and you're like, okay, I'll do it. And then and then you're like writing a note to yourself. or you... Guys, not, not as only dangerous, not only is it stupid, but you can have someone do it on contingency. For those of you that don't know what on contingency means is you only pay them if the deal closes. You guys with me? Okay. There are companies do things on contingency. So my point is if you want a transaction coordinator, someone to handle and someone who's frankly, no offense guys, better than you at it because that's what they do all day, every day. They sit at a desk in a controlled environment while you're in front of clients and driving up and down the highway and going here and going there and shaking hands and kissing babies and all this stuff. They are sitting in one place at one time handling your file. Who do you think is going to do a better job, them or you? Put them or me in the chat, all right? So the point I'm getting to, folks, it's not only do you spend less time worrying about small details, okay, but you spend more time in front of clients. You spend more time doing the things that actually move the needle. Can you see yes or no how you're going to make more money by making just those two small shifts, okay? Actually, it's three. Learn how to become a listing agent, numero uno. Number two is is uh, it, it get a, a, a listing, uh, I'm sorry, a, a VA, virtual assistant or some any sort of assistant. And number three is get a transaction coordinator. Step number four, okay? One second. Is, <clears throat> whoopsie, uh, keep your eye open for deals. Folks, remember this. I, this always stuck with me, right? John Lennon said about Elvis, he did everything before anyone did anything, right? That dude, he was just, he was the first rock star. He was the first people, person with a jet. He was the first person with groupies. He was the first person, like, you name it. Elvis was the first person to, like, throw a TV outside the hotel, yada, yada, yada. The point I'm making is, folks, right, just like Elvis did everything before anyone did anything, we as brokers, we see everything before anyone sees anything. What are the two things, folks, for those of you that come week in, week out, and for those of my private students that are on the line, right? What are the two things that we sell? The only two things that we have as agents and brokers, what are they? the two things that we sell? Put it in the chat for me, guys. T and K, 
Boom, Linda. Yes, time and knowledge. Folks, those are the only bargaining chips we have, okay? You are the only bargaining chips we have are our time and our knowledge. So doesn't it stand to reason that the knowledge that we acquire, like where, what's under this rock, what's under that rock, what's an off-market deal, this, that, and, and so forth, right? Before it hits the market, is it safe to say that there's value in that information that Mrs. Smith at 123 Main Street, who's been in there for X amount of years and her husband just died, she wants to sell because she doesn't like dealing with tenants? Does it stand to reason that that's valuable information? You had better believe it. The point I'm making, folks, okay, we see everything before the entire market, before anyone sees anything. So uh, it's illegal to trade on that information in the stock market, okay? It's not illegal to, to trade on that information in the real estate market. You with me, folks? Okay, it's called insider trading. Uh, Miss uh, Martha Stewart went up, went up the river for that. <laughs> she was wearing orange for a while for trading on inside information. It's not illegal to do, right? You go someplace, you knock on someone's door or you cold call someone or whatever, and they tell you they're looking to sell. Guess what? That is officially inside information. It has value. And the best kind of value is when you take that information and you use it for yourself. You with me, guys? Type inside information in the chat, guys. I want to make sure that this stuff is landing. Does this make sense? Because folks, right, if you're not going to use it, someone else will. Straight up, someone else will. Think about it, folks. As an agent, okay, you look at the market, look at a building, see what the value is in relation to the market. Then you turn around, you get the listing, and then you take that property and then you sell it to a buyer and they make their family and themselves more wealthy as a result. Well, why would you do make a whole career out of doing that? How about this? Learn enough about the, 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 the business so that you get comfortable. And then you look at a property, you determine its value, you buy it. And instead of making someone else's family wealthy, you make your own family wealthy and yourself in, in, in the process. Does that make a little bit more sense, guys? Right? Type heck yeah. Okay. Because that's what we're talking about, guys. At the end of the day, you can stay on the hamster wheel your entire career. And that's cool. And make other people's families wealthy and make their retirements comfortable. Or you can aim that skill set at yourself and start to do it for yourself. Okay. And that's what we're talking about. That's the process. Guys, we are front row here. Why not trade on the information that we spend all the, all the vast majority of our time unearthing? Okay. So, Folks, which brings me to the next one, okay? When you see a deal, act quickly, okay? And now maybe some of you aren't in the position yet, but I am gonna go out on a limb and tell you guys, okay, most of you are 10 deals or less away from being able to get into your first commercial deal. Here's what I mean. Do me a little, do a little math for me, folks, okay? The average size commercial transaction, according to CoStar, nationwide is $1.6 million, Okay. Multiply 1.6 million times 0.03, okay? All right. What do you got? What's that come out to? Because that's a commission on an average size deal nationwide, okay? And I'm sure you guys watching this are not average, but let's just, just type that in the chat. What's uh, 1.6 million times 0 0.03? What is that? What does that look like, guys? Come on. Come on. There we go. Way to go, Sam. 48K. Exactly. Folks, the point I'm making is if you, I don't know, Kimberly Muse Hunter, right? If you had $480,000 burning a hole in your pocket, do you think you could get yourself into a commercial deal? Yeah. Oh, maybe you can't unmute. Okay. She said, I hope. All right. You better believe it because you know what that means? With 25% down, she could get into about, I don't know, million eight, million nine. Okay. At 7%, right? You, you know, what are we talking about? You know, $100, $150,000 in NOI, like, like a little bit of cash flow. Do you think that would make some sense, guys? You'd better believe it. Okay. So the point is, most of you are like, 10 deals or less away from being able to get into your first commercial transaction if you haven't gotten into one already. Does that, does that make sense, guys? Type 10 deals if that's something that, that gets you fired up, right? Think about it, right? You're not that far off. And yes, I understand you have company splits. And yes, I understand, you know, uh, you got to pay Uncle Sam and all that good stuff. I, I fully understand that. 
but I want you to start, just start thinking conception. Maybe it's not 10 deals. Maybe it's 12 deals. I don't know. But the point I'm making is guys, 10 deals away. Most of you are 10 deals or less away from getting into your first commercial transaction. Because what? guess what, guys? When you do that, your whole world will open up. Okay. That's precisely what I did. I found an expired. I found something that everybody else had looked at for 15 months. And everybody looked at it and said, oh God, this is a turd. You know what? I looked at it and I thought it was a turd. But guess what? I polished. I put, I put some lipstick on that pig. And guess what? It has more than tripled in value since I bought it. I am happy, happy, happy. I did all my numbers at $8 a foot. And now we're getting $21 a foot in our market. Hey, right place, right time. You know, I'd rather be lucky than good. But the point is, folks, all right, the most important thing you can do is go out every day looking for opportunities. Sooner or later, they're going to come your way. And when you see a deal, like I said, act quickly. All right, folks, thank you so much for being here. Really love it when you guys show up. Thank you for everybody that comes week after week after week. The one thing I'm going to ask you to do, okay, I'll keep coming back. I promise I'll keep coming back and giving it my all. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is go and implement one thing you learned tonight. Implement one thing over the next seven days. In fact, do me a favor, put that in the chat. What, what are you going to put, do in the next seven days, okay? Because if you show up here every week and you listen, 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 and you never implement anything, folks, you're going to be in the same spot seven days from now and then seven days after that, seven days, seven days, seven days, seven days, okay? So let's get you implementing. I have a nine- 91 rule, okay? You need a little bit of information and a lot of implementation and then come back and get a little bit of information and a lot of implementation, okay, folks? All right, so if you aren't doing 10 times the amount of, of implementing as you are learning, okay, you're doing it wrong. Most people think that the next answer is right around the next YouTube video, the next book, the next webinar, the next this, okay? It's not. It's about implementing the right things at the right time, okay? If you have a plan, great. Go out and implement it. If you don't have a plan, let's have a talk. Let's get you on the right, right path, and then let's get you implementing because nothing changes until you do. Folks, have a great week. Look forward to seeing you and go out and implement. All right, guys, thanks so much. I'll talk to you later.